Hello everyone, welcome to the mock lecture series of the Rigged project of the Interreg Northwest Europe program. I'm Marco Del Vecchio, I'm from TPSC and I'm a composite materials engineer. TPSC is the Thermoplastics Composites Application Center located in the east of the Netherlands in Enschede. Thermoplastics Composites Application Center is an independent innovation research and development center that aims at the understanding of thermoplastics composites and their manufacturing on applied research level. So, it focuses on application, like as I say, thermoplastic composites, and uh, we can uh, divide the research of TPSC as in three areas, processing, automation, and recycling. Uh, these uh, three main, main areas um, focus mostly uh, on the uh, recycling method and processing method for uh, thermoplastics composites uh, since TPSC offers a breeding grant for national and regional companies. Today we will talk about thermoplastics and thermostats material. After giving an introduction of those materials we will define the main features of thermoplastics and thermosets, their properties, processing and applications, Eventually, an insight to the recycling of these materials will be given. But what are polymers exactly? Polymers are very large molecules made when hundreds of monomers or dozens of polymers that are called also repeat units join together to form long chains. A big molecule is basically built up by the repetition of more simple chemical units called monomers. So if you see the picture, for example, the small circles, those are the monomers, and they are made hundreds of these, ton of these, give a polymer. The repetition can be linear or branched, or can be also interconnected to form networks. Within each molecule, the atoms are bound together by covalent interatomic bonds. And, for example, for a carbon uh, chain polymers, the backbone of each chain is a string of carbon atoms. So, uh, within uh, the polymer field in general, uh, several classification can be given to uh, differentiate all the polymers. These are uh, shown in the table and it are molecular structure, physical state, chemical structure, response to environment and cost. As for the molecular structure, we can ask for example whether the polymer is linear, as we can see in the picture, or branched can be also cross-linked, in this case we talk about the thermoset polymer. Or we can ask, is it a pneumopolymer or a copolymer? If we consider, for example, the physical state, the polymer um, may be in the molten state with a viscosity characteristic of a liquid, for example, or the elasticity associated to a rubbery material, so the rubbery state. Uh, we can also ask, for example, if it's amorphous or semi-crystalline, and uh, that is the main differentiation of a uh, thermoplastic polymer. And as for the chemical structure, we can uh, differentiate the polymers as for their chemical group present, like can be, for example, an ether group, an ester group, hydroxyl, or uh, their synthesis method. That can be, for example, the propagation, the ring opening, and so on. Eventually, as for the response to the environment, that's the main classification of the polymers, so uh, thermoplastics and thermosets. The uh, main distinction, the main difference is that the thermoplastic material can soften and flow in response to agents or to um, um, uh, parameters like the temperature or the pressure, while thermosets, uh, once aided, uh, they cannot be resoftened. And this is due mostly to the cross-link to the um, bonds among the chains, among the, the, the atoms. Uh, as for the uh, last one, so the coast, uh, we can differentiate about low-cost polymers that we will see that are commodity thermoplastics or general purpose polymers and high-cost and specialty polymers that have, of course, better mechanical properties, but this we will see later. As a definition of thermoplastic, uh, we can think about a resin that is solid at room temperature but becomes plastic and soft upon heating flowing uh, due to the crystal melting or when exposed at temperature that are higher than the glass transition temperature. Upon processing, uh, thermoplastics take the shape of the mold within uh, they are placed and within they melt 
and cool to solidify into the desired shape, into the desired form. Uh, the main aspect uh, of uh, the thermoplastic material is the reversibility. Uh, and for reversibility I mean uh, the ability to undergo reheating, melt again and change shape. Uh, this allows for additional processing of the same material even after solidification. And this um, uh, can happen mostly since uh, weak molecular interforces and no crosslinks are present uh, among the, uh, the polymer chains as we can see in the picture. Um, so uh, there's uh, weak molecular uh, forces among the chain that can be broken when uh, parameters like temperature or pressure have been applied. As for thermosets, Basically, uh, they are a liquid material at a room temperature which hardens irreversibly upon heating or chemical addition. Uh, when placed in a mold and then they are heated, the thermoset solidifies into the specific shape, but this solidification um, includes the formation of certain bonds that they are called cross-links or networks, uh, that hold the molecules in place and change the basic nature of the material, preventing it from melting. And we can see the crosslink as this uh, straight line among the atoms uh, here in the picture. As a result, a thermoset, as opposed to the thermoplastics, can return to its initial phase, rendering the process irreversible and becoming fixed in a specific, specific form. Then, uh, thermoplastics uh, generally provide a high strength, flexibility, and they are resistant to. Um, uh, shrinkage, uh, of course, depending on the type of resin that they are using. Uh, they are uh, quite versatile materials that can be used uh, anything, um, can be used for anything, uh, for uh, from plastics uh, or uh, to, to bottles or to uh, high stress uh, bearings application and so on. What about thermosets? Thermosets they have a, a higher chemical and heat resistance uh, if compared to the thermoplastics as well as a stronger structure that does not uh, deform easily. Um, thermoplastics and thermosets uh, can be defined uh, also according uh, to their molecular and microstructure but also according to their polymerization and uh, eventually according to their solubility. Uh, as for their molecular structure, in general uh, they are linear polymer with weak molecular bonds in a straight chain formation while thermosets, uh, as we can see in the table, um, they uh, have crosslinks uh, and the crosslinks are really strong chemical bonds uh, among the, the, the chains. Uh, as for the microstructure, so regarding the microstructure, uh, thermoplastic materials are mostly comprised of hard crystalline and elastic amorphous region in its solid state, while the thermosets are comprised or are made of mostly of thermosetting resin in, in, in its solid state. Uh, as for the polymerization, uh, the uh, addition polymerization is uh, typical of uh, polymers uh, like the thermoplastics, why polycondensation polymerization or also called uh, step growth polymerization is typical of thermosets. Uh, and eventually, uh, as for the solubility, uh, thermoplastics can dissolve in organic solvents like benzene, toluene or acetone, uh, while thermosets do not. Uh, talking about the properties, uh, and specifically the mechanical properties, thermoplastics in general are flexible and elastic, and they possess a high resistance to impact uh, that can be sometimes higher 10 times than the thermosets. Uh, for these polymers, the strength uh, comes mostly from the crystalline regions, and on the other side, uh, thermosets are quite inelastic and brittle, uh, strong and rigid materials, and for them, the strength comes mostly from the crosslinks, from the networks that are created among the chains. So this can be uh, also seen in the graph below, uh, typical for thermosets are the hard and brittle material or hard and strong, while for thermoplastics is uh, mostly a soft and tough behavior or hard and tough behavior. Um, as for uh, chemical resistance, uh, both of them, so thermoplastic and thermosets, are high chemical and corrosion resistant, while thermosets are also uh, quite heat resistant. And uh, eventually, if a crack uh, occurs, uh, thermoplastics can be easily repaired, also like uh, in a remelting process, while thermosets are quite difficult to repair when there is a crack. 
Um, in this picture, uh, we can see the general classification of the thermoplastic polymers. Uh, they can be divided mostly into amorphous and semi-crystalline uh, according to the presence of a semi-crystalline region uh, within the chains or not. Uh, at the bottom of the pyramid, we can see the commodity thermoplastics, uh, like for example the most known polypropylene, polyethylene, polyethylene terephthalate, uh, that are basically the most used plastics. Uh, after that, we can see the engineering thermoplastics, uh, that, like for example polycarbonate or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, uh, that are a group of plastics with better mechanical properties and or thermal properties than the commodity thermoplastics. Above this, we can see the high-performance engineering thermoplastics that meet basically a higher requirements uh, than the commodity or engineering thermoplastics. Uh, they can be subdivided into two classes that are high-temperature plastics and extreme-temperature uh, plastics according to the uh, processing temperatures. Uh, typical names are yeah, the PPS or the uh, PPEK. Uh, next topic uh, regards the processing of these polymers. Uh, due to the presence of intermolecular bonds, thermoplastics have a melting point that is lower than the degradation temperature. On the other side, thermosets do not melt, they only have a degradation temperature. When a thermoplastic uh, melts, uh, the material acquires energy. Uh, for that, the melting is considered as an endothermic uh, reaction. For thermosets, the formation of crosslinks, so of the uh, bonds, requires a release of energy and this means that the process uh, is exothermic. During the processing, the process viscosity of the thermoplastics can be very high, uh, while uh, the process viscosity for thermosets is quite low since the polymer is already in a liquid state, and uh, the process time for thermoplastics is potentially short, while for thermosets uh, is often long and uh, in fact they need some time for the curing process and to solidify. And in general, uh, the, uh, as for the service temperature, thermoplastics has a lower continuous use temperature than the thermosets. Uh, following on the processing methods, um, in general for thermoplastics, um, what happens? Granular material uh, is fed into the mold uh, or into the hopper where... I think that you need to... Yeah, the screen. That you need to move a bit because ah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, no. so if I do this it's a bit of a okay okay just start from yeah. now yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so following on the processing methods uh, in general uh, granular for thermoplastics granular material is uh, fed into the mold where it is heated into the melting temperature that is uh, quite high in temperature and then eventually it is shaped and formed uh, the thermosets are processed in their liquid form under heat and at a slow curing time. Uh, in both processes you can add uh, other material that can be for example uh, additive, hardness, plasticizer, filler and this is uh, according to the final application. You want to add for example some additive uh, if you want to increase the impact resistance or the stiffness. You want to add a plasticizer if you want to uh, lo uh, lower the viscosity or if you want to add uh, fillers is, uh, because you want to reinforce the material. Um, this happens for uh, both processes. Uh, typical processing methods for uh, thermoplastics are uh, the extrusion, injection molding, compression molding, thermoforming, vacuum forming, uh, but also blow molding and rotational molding. On the other side, uh, for thermosex, uh, typical processing methods are uh, the uh, RIM, so the reaction injection molding, or the compression and transfer molding filament winding and spin coating. Uh, basically, here in the picture there's a, uh, the explanation of the spin coating process uh, where uh, basically a resin and epoxy is, uh, is placed on a uh, rotating uh, spin uh, that is rotating while uh, drying and curing. Uh, from now, uh, some types of the most used thermoplastics and thermosets uh, and their application will be named. Um, as for the thermoplastics, uh, you can see each molecular uh, structure here at the right of uh, each name. We will start with polypropylene. So the polypropylene is a light thermoplastic with a density that is lower than one. Uh, it has an excellent chemical resistance. It is used for medical equipment, ropes, tubes, piping, uh, kitchen utensils. So uh, for that's why it's called 
as a commodity thermoplastics. Another uh, of those commodity thermoplastics can be the polyethylene uh, that can be distinguished in uh, low density polyethylene, high, uh, high density polyethylene, linear low density polyethylene, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Uh, basically, it's a high a chemical resistant material, and these properties vary according to the type of, uh, of the type of polyethylene. Typical for um, pipes, flooring, cabinets, or uh, in general as a tough and durable materials can be the PVC, the polyvinyl chloride. Um, then there is the polyserine uh, PS, that is a stiff, hard, brittle thermoplastic that is used for rigid packaging. And then eventually the PET, uh, we all know the PET is the polyethylene terephthalate and it's a hygroscopic, uh, strong and impact resistant resin that is used mostly in textile application but also as for packaging, I mean containers for liquids and food like the, the, the PET bottle water uh, but also as for soft and rigid packaging. Now we move to the thermoses uh, polymers, the most typical and their applications. Uh, we recall them mostly epoxy resins, polyester resins, polyurethane, urea formaldehyde, and phenylformaldehyde. Uh, the epoxy resin uh, is um, a thermoset that is quite hard and brittle, uh, even without extra reinforcement, and is used mostly for adhesives and bonding of materials. Um, the polyester resin uh, contains uh, basically ester groups, and the they are quite hard, uh, stiff and brittle when uh, uh, laminated and they are used for encapsulation, bonding and casting applications. Uh, then the polyurethane um, is made of urethane links and it is a strong and durable material mostly used in uh, insulating foam, uh, shoes, car parts, uh, adhesives and sealants. And urea formaldehyde is produced from uh, the reaction of urea and the formaldehyde and it's quite a hard a uh, strong non-transparent polymer with good chemical and water resistance that is used for work surface laminates or tableware and electric insulation uh, and eventually we have phenol formaldehyde uh, that is uh, produced by the reaction of the phenols and the formaldehyde um, that is a quite uh, strong heat and electrical resistant material used mostly in electrical items like yeah, showcase, plugs, car parts and so on. Uh, now we move uh, to the topic of the recycling of thermoplastics and thermosets and how do they differentiate. So um, this topic, as I said maybe at the beginning, is the one that most differentiates the thermoplastics from the thermosets. In fact, due to the different type of, um, of bond among the chain, uh, thermoplastics can be melted again after usage and so far that they are reusable and recyclable. On the contrary, thermosets uh, are not recyclable since the crosslinks are not easy to be broken. Uh, for these reasons, thermosets have a very high durability, while thermoplastics are durable but subjected anyway to a thermal and physical aging after some times. Uh, in general, uh, the uh, traditional methods to manage waste polymers uh, like combustion or burning underground uh, they show really a negative effect on the environment, uh, like formation of dust, pollution, fumes. Uh, so that's why it's important uh, that uh, recycling techniques uh, are developed. Uh, we can differentiate as a mostly uh, four types of recycling techniques: the primary, secondary tertiary and quaternary recycling. Uh, the primary is the re-extrusion, so basically the material is put again for a second extrusion, so it can be reshaped and reused. And it's mostly, of course, for thermoplastics. Secondary recycling is the mechanical recycling, and it's basically the uh, re-grinding of the material, so reducing in shape of the material. Uh, tertiary recycling is the chemical or feedstock recycling when the material is uh, basically uh, through a thermochemical process uh, reconducted to their initial monomer and eventually quaternary recycling is the energy recovery so the material is used uh, as for production of steam or energy uh, for industries and so on. But uh, we mentioned that the thermosets uh, are quite durable uh, how can uh, we define the durability? Um, durability can be defined as the ability for a material to exist for long uh, without a significant deterioration by resisting the effect of uh, agents like heavy use, drying, wetting, heating, uh, 
uh, freezing, corrosion, uh, oxidation, volatilization, degradation. So um, the durability um, depends uh, basically on the performance of the polymer and the long-term behavior in the environmental and recent conditions. So it can be depending on the chemical nature of the material, uh, process condition used to manufacture it, uh, used and load regime, that is the condition uh, to which the polymer is subjected, and eventually the environmental exposure, like the service condition, as the sum of all the factors that are uh, acting on the material, so uh, rain, wind, oxygen, and uh, so on. We can see um, the synthesis, the resume of all this here in the graph. Uh, now uh, that we went through these main aspects of the thermoplastics and thermosets, let's give it a summary of pros and cons of those kind of polymers. Let's start with the thermoplastics. Uh, so we understood that they are highly recyclable uh, thanks to the possibility of remelting and reshaping them. Uh, these are low uh, and eco-friendly manufacturing. Uh, again, them, they have also aesthetically superior finishes and uh, mechanical uh, property-wise, they are high impact resistance, chemical resistance, uh, and as for the surface option, they can be hard crystalline or uh, rubbery. Moving to the cons, so uh, main disadvantages of thermoplastics regard the cost. Uh, they basically can be more expensive than thermosets and the processing methods are way more expensive, uh, mostly uh, due to the equipment of the cost. Uh, the, the, no, yeah, the cost of the equipment. Yeah. Yeah, let's do again this one. So uh, now that we went through the, um, uh, the main aspects of the thermoplastic and thermosets, let's give it a summary of pros and cons. Uh, starting with the thermoplastics, uh, we understood that they are quite uh, highly recyclable uh, thanks to their remolding and reshaping capabilities. Um, so that's for that they are eco-friendly, uh, they have an eco-friendly manufacturing. Uh, they have also uh, aesthetically superior finishes and uh, mechanically property wise. Uh, they are impact resistant, chemical resistant and as for the surface options they can be hard, crystalline or rubbery. Uh, moving to the cons, uh, main disadvantages of thermoplastics regard the cost of the material and the processes since they are more expensive than the thermosets and the processing methods are way more expensive. Uh, furthermore, uh, they are not always suitable to all the applications due to the softening during the heating. Uh, to end, let's summarize the pros and cons of the thermosets. Uh, so, uh, due to their cross-link structure, they possess high levels of dimensional stability and they are more resistant to high temperature than the thermoplastics. Besides, they are uh, highly flexible in design and mechanically uh, property wise, they are hard, uh, stiff and strong materials. Uh, they have also quite excellent aesthetical appearance um, and they are cost effective polymers. Uh, as for the disadvantages, yeah, as we already say, that they cannot be recycled. Uh, due to the presence of network among chains and this means that they cannot be remolded and reshaped. Um, so next to this they are more difficult also to surface, uh, surface finishing. Uh, so this was the last slide. Uh, thanks uh, for joining the mock classes and I hope these trainings can help you uh, for any question about thermoplastics and composites so do not hesitate to contact uh, info at thermoplastics composites NL or to visit our uh, website. Uh, if you want to learn more about composites, then see you at the next class.